Namaste. Welcome to Junior Tesla. In this episode of Junior Tesla, I'm going to tell you what are the three basic rules of mathematics. And to understand those three basic rules of mathematics, let us have a little historical background. We'll start our uh, episode with a story. We all know what a prime number is. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 20, 3, 20, 29, all these are prime numbers, right? So prime number is a number which has only two factors, one and itself. It is not divisible by any other number. Now, if you want to generate only odd numbers, odd natural numbers, you can have a formula, right? So odd number is equal to 2n plus 1. Now, if you put n equal to 1, 2, 3, etc., you always end up with an odd number. If you put n equal to 1, you will get 2 into 1 plus 1, which is equal to 3. So like that, you will get always one odd number. Similarly, you know what an even number is, right? So if you want to generate only even numbers, you can have a formula. Even number is equal to 2n. And every time you substitute n equal to 1, 2, 3, etc., you always get one even number. Now similarly, can you have a function, can you have a formula which will generate only prime numbers? This was a challenge. This was a very big question for mathematicians about 500 years ago. So there were many mathematicians who were trying to find a formula for generating only prime numbers. And there was a very famous math mathematician, French mathematician called Fermat. And he told in 17th century, yes, I have found a formula for generating only prime numbers. And all the mathematicians were so thrilled. They asked, what is the formula? So he told, uh, f is equal to 2 power 2 power k plus 1. This is the formula. Now, if you put k equal to 1, 2, 3, etc., you always get one prime number. Suppose if you put k equal to 1, you get 2 power 2 power 1 plus 1, which is equal to 5. Similarly, if you put 2 equal to k equal to 2, then uh, 2 power 2 power 2, that is 2 power 4 plus 1, 2 power 4 is 16, 16 plus 1 is 17. Yes, that is also a prime number. And if you put k equal to 3, you will end up with another prime number, a bigger prime number. So mathematicians, they checked for <coughs> some initial values. Every time they got a prime number, they were happy. They thought, okay, this is going to be a formula for generating the prime numbers. Every time you put a value for k, you always get one prime number. And this result, that this is the formula for generating prime numbers, this particular result, was known to be true for 100 years. Nobody questioned because Fermat was a very famous mathematician. He cannot make a mistake. That is what everybody thought. So whatever Fermat has told is must be 100% correct. But after 100 years, there was another mathematician, a Swiss mathematician, Leonard Euler. Okay. So in 18th century, he took up this particular formula and he started working on it. And finally he told this formula gives prime numbers for k equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4, but not 5. When you put k equal to 5, you get one very large number, okay, very large number, but this number is not a prime number, but a composite number. And that is how everybody like, they got so uh, stunned, because this is a very big number. If you take some initial values like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., none of those numbers divide this number. So even Fermat thought this must be a prime number. But no, this is not a prime number. So Euler told, if you take a three digit number, 641, 640, 641, that number actually divides this number. So this is a composite number, not prime. And that is how the, the theorem or the result that has been built by Fermat for 100 years, it is, it is crushed, okay? it is demolished. And the new truth was established that is, there is no formula, there is no formula for generating prime numbers, right? Now Euler, again, he was as famous as Fermat or you can say even more famous than Fermat. He was a very established mathematician and Euler, he also had given one statement, okay? He told, suppose if I take an equation, a power 4 plus b power 4 plus c power 4 equal to d power 4, Okay, if I take this particular equation, then there are no positive integers a, b, c, d that satisfy this equation. That is what Euler told. While working on some algebraic problem, he came up with this particular uh, problem and he told 
no there cannot be any positive integers a b c d that will satisfy this particular equation now again mathematicians believed because he was a very great mathematician so whatever he told there cannot be any mistake it cannot be wrong because he has uh, produced hundreds of results correct results so they thought even this must be true it was not challenged but later after 245 years almost two and a half centuries okay there was one mathematician in harvard called noan elkis now noan elkis took the help of supercomputers and found that this particular statement of euler is not correct so we can actually find four values four positive integers a b c d i have given i have written the values of a b c and d these four numbers now if you substitute these big numbers now each number is some some five six digits okay definitely you cannot do it using pen and paper definitely you need the help of computers okay so these big numbers these large numbers if they are substituted in this particular equation the equation will be true that means it is possible to find positive integers which will satisfy the equation a power 4 plus b power 4 plus c power 4 equal to d power 4 no one else is not only found these four values this person also proved that there can be infinitely many such solutions so this is not the only solution there can be n number of solutions so some mathematicians they established some statement and it will be questioned later and a new truth will be established now whenever a mathematician comes up with some statement which has not been proved or disproved is called conjecture okay so conjecture is a statement that has not been proved or disproved now once the statement called conjecture has been proved it becomes a theorem and if it is disproved then it will not remain as a conjecture it becomes a false statement now to disprove a conjecture what you have to do is either you have to disprove it using some proof okay lengthy proof or even one small counter example is enough so in euler's case he gave one very small counter example he told if you put k equal to 5 this will not remain as a prime number so that is called as counter example counter example is one example that disproves an established statement that disproves a conjecture similarly this is one counter example which disproved euler's statement so conjectures are the statements that are not proved or disproved and counter example is one example that disproves as an established statement or a conjecture okay now let us come back to the three basic rules of mathematics the three basic rules of mathematics the first rule do not accept anything without proof do not accept anything without proof because just because forma had told just because euler told you, you need not accept it unless it is proved it need not be taken seriously it need not be taken as truth so do not accept anything without proof and rule number 2 is do not accept anything without proof and rule number 3 do not accept anything without proof so in mathematics if something something does not have a proof it need not be accepted and once it is proved it can be considered as the truth thank you